A deadly fire at a Georgetown kennel in September prompted a push for change to better regulate pet boarding facilities. 75 dogs died at that fire in the Ponderosa Pet Resort. The KV defenders dug into safety issues and what leaders are doing to prevent a similar tragedy. Here's investigative reporter Erica Proffer. This one? Yeah. That's a funny one. Yeah. Some dogs live up to their names, <laughs> even when it's coaster. That was some pretty good coaster right there. <laughs> well, he didn't know that many words, <laughs> but we basically just said, what do you want to name the dogs? And we said, what about this one? And it was shoes. We're like, okay. <laughs> and then what about that one? And it was coaster. Coaster and her sister shoes were both a Weimaraner and Pointer mix. <laughs> they became part of the family when the family needed them most. Just before we got them, about a month before, somebody that I loved very much um, took his own life. You know, they brought us an immense amount of comfort. Comfort for two years. Shoes and Coaster died September 18th, along with 73 other dogs in a kennel fire. The Georgetown business had no one on staff when the fire started. No smoke alarms, no sprinklers. Every time I closed my eyes, you know, I had really bad pictures of them like trapped in the crates and just like awful, terrible images. Emily said the remains of Shoes, Coaster, and the others stayed in the burned out building for two days while investigators searched for the cause of the fire. Emily identified her dogs before cremation. Shoes, like she had obviously tried to, you know, get out of the crate desperately based on the condition of her like mouth and face and but her, her teeth were broken and bloody, there was blood all over. Um, but yeah, so it's hard to get those images out of your head and it's hard to not picture them, you know, all the dogs just alone and, and trapped in there by themselves and, and terrified, you know? No dog escaped the fire. The community mourned and vowed to never let this happen again. Oh, I just want to express my deepest sympathies. Leaders with the city of Georgetown asked the public what should change. The KV Defender found dozens of emails and website forms pushing for change. 80% of the people writing to the city wanted fire sprinklers, 36 people in the first week alone. Cost is absolutely a concern in any business decision, but putting sprinklers into a building is an investment as much as it is a cost. Jeff Shapiro is the fire protection engineer for Lake Travis Fire Rescue. I'm gonna have you unscrew the cap. And the executive too. director of the Texas Fire Protection Association. This is a concealed style fire sprinkler. He says fire sprinklers offer the best protection and it lowers insurance rates. Some sprinklers are called extended coverage. They can cover an area of 20 by 20 or 400 square feet. Feet. But, he says, governments typically do not force existing businesses to retrofit. The cost typically is a big factor in a government decision to not require retrofitting existing facilities. And not all areas have the infrastructure needed for a building to get sprinklers. So requiring a business to retrofit could also cost taxpayers. Texas Representative James Tellerico filed a bill during the third special session this year. If passed, dog kennels without 24-hour staffing must have fire alarms and sprinklers. The bill went nowhere. But the most important thing for an existing facility would be to have an early alarm, which would be a smoke or fire alarm system that is monitored by a central station that can dispatch the fire department immediately. In the letters to the city, 75% of people mentioned smoke alarms, demanding kennels have a system to notify the fire department immediately and remotely. The Georgetown Fire Chief John Sullivan told Building Standards Commission where the kennel fire started and how it traveled through the building. It happened shortly before 10:40 uh, p.m. He said surveillance video showed the fire stayed in one area for at least 12 minutes while smoke and gases rose. A lot of those gases, heat, and everything went to the top. We know that the animals uh, were largely alive up until that point. But no emergency call had been made. No one knew about the fire until it was too late. And in a matter of two minutes, you just saw the smoke go from all the way over to the other side of the building. Using Sullivan's timeline, from when the fire started and adding their five minute response time, firefighters had enough time to get here before the dogs burned. If only they were alerted sooner. The fact that a fire got as large as it did before 911 was accessed had everything to do with the fact that there was not a smoke alarm or heat alarm device that was required in that type of a building. In response, Georgetown's Building Standards Commission called on changes to the city's fire code. The new code would define animal housing and care facilities, identifying those which kennel animals, including veterinary offices. If passed, 26 businesses in Georgetown would be impacted, 
The codes would require existing facilities to have a heat or smoke alarm installed with automatic notification to a monitoring company, unless staffed 24-7. Got a motion, got a second. All in favor? New kennels would also be required to have sprinklers. Aye. Aye. Unless the owner has a fire alarm system with a monitoring company, plus fire-resistant interior materials. The codes now need city council approval. And we certainly realize within the pets that, that they cannot escape on their own and, and that they are truly dependent on us. Vicki Pritchett with the National Fire Sprinklers Association said now is the best time for business owners to install sprinklers. Those who do by the end of 2022 can get a 100% tax deduction. It, it covers the whole cost of retrofitting with fire sprinklers. Emily and her family moved to Bernie, Texas shortly after the fire. Little bit. She said they picked this home with her dog's shoes and coaster in mind. Buying the house, it was this yard's good for the kids, but is it good for the dogs too, you know? And then... So when you guys were buying this house, you bought it with... With the dogs in mind, absolutely. Because they were a part of our family, you know, like... They never saw the house? They never saw this house, nope. Never got to go in the backyard? Never got to go in the yard, nope. For now, the family keeps company with these rescued kittens. We miss our girls. We miss our dogs a lot. Um, we love them, we miss them, and we are very, very sorry to them. But why do you apologize? I, because I feel like, um, like I failed them, you know? Like I should have known better. I didn't ask the questions. I didn't, I didn't, I just assumed, you know, that this is a kennel that's been operating, that it's safe. It's, it's hard and you know, you just never expect it. And um, I don't know, those, the dogs, they were so important to us. Like it's, it's you know, um, I'm just sorry that, I, that they were alone. In Georgetown with the KBU Defenders, I'm Erica Proffer. And if you have something you want the defenders to look into, we want to hear from you. Text your news tips to 512-459-9442.